Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego. Review those amazing bricks of plastic and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig ghost, Matt. Let's build on it. Welcome in, everybody. How are we doing today? Got a Lego Masters Season 3, Episode 3 recap show here for you, if you couldn't tell already, by the description, by the title. And there is a... um, Something coming for episode four, we'll talk about at the end of this. We've got a lot to talk about, a lot to break down, a lot to digest, honestly. So let's go ahead and do that. Season three, episode three of Lego Masters US. Well, a lot has happened, a lot. And I apologize for any way that I may sound um, fighting off this allergy junk that just never stops. Can't wait to go to New York to get away from some of this. Anyway, so this challenge... The Brick Bull Rodeo. Hello? Are you making fun of Texas? No, it's clearly not just Texas. Cowboy, what? The cowboy capital of the world is Wyoming, so it's not Texas at all. Anyway, so a bunch of them had a bunch of really cool builds. Some of them were a little weird, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. So let's kick it off with Emily and Liam. They're the mother son couple, uh, couple, that, that sounds wrong. They're the mother son builder pair. And they did a jackalope jill. Well, jackalope fits perfect for cowboy desert plains lifestyle. So that's perfect. Prairie land. I really like the pink of the uh, that's on the body of the bunny and the uh, the massive ears because jackalopes. I don't I'm not. Well, jack rabbits. Jack rabbits have massive ears, just massive ears because, you know, they got to get that heat out. That's just the way it works. But the large eyes, I love the large eyes that they used. I thought that was really cool as well. It was a really cute build. It was one of my, it was not overly intricate. It was kind of, plain isn't the right word, but it was very simple. It was pretty and it was very simple and it really worked in their favor. It was really cute though. So of course, this is just the way that I have it listed in my notes. I don't change it ever until somebody, you know, is eliminated and then somebody's spot either moves up or moves down. But anyway, so Will turned up the meter and its thing is bucking and doing all its thing, all the movements, and it broke off on level 10. That's the max that you can get, level 10. They're the only ones that did that, which is highly improbable (laughs) to even have that happen, accomplish that feat, and they did. So after it had happened... I went back and I clicked through, you know, scene by scene, kind of looking at things. And the only thing that I can keep wondering that I keep coming back to is the way that the base was laid out, if maybe that's the reason that it stayed on specifically. Because there had to be a stud attachment to the base of the saddle for this this mechanical bull that they were using. And what I found really fascinating is their build was very squatty in its style of build. All of the weight was kind of transferred down to the bottom of the build. And if you go back and watch it, or you go back and look at it, what you notice is that the, I guess if you've ever seen like a rabbit sit and they're they're kind of, their haunches, the way their legs are and stuff like that, it's kind of, they, they kind of look fat on the bottom, right? And everything looked very kind of thick on the bottom, but in a good way. It was very much like there wasn't a lot of weight but it was just the way things were laid out to make it look, well, I don't know if looks were what they're necessarily going for, but it was just the way that the squatty part of the build, the squatty style of it just really made it connect really well and hold the center of gravity right there instead of being, you know, further up. Nick and Stacy are next on the block here. They did Bella the Ballerina. Man, she sure is pretty. Oh, I do love that ballerina. That was actually a really cool build. I was really impressed. I loved the feathering on the bottom of her skirt with the plates that they used, the angled plates. Oh, that was so cool. It just, it gave it a different dimension, a different look, a different feel. Just really brought you into it. The articulated legs on the sides were nice as well. I like that. They're they're not the only ones that did that. Others did it. It's just something different. It's some, some really didn't do legs, but I absolutely love the way that it was done. 
their build broke off at level nine. Level nine. So they got close. They got really close. So next one here we have are Carrie and Patrick. They are the grandpappies is what they called themselves. They did a spaced out cowboy build. Had unique parts, wild colors. And immediately when I saw it, I was like, this looks like something from one of the Lego movies. <laughs> the colors, the parts, it just looked very bizarre. Just looked very bizarre, but it was really cool looking. The thing that struck me right off of the bat was when they showed their build, when they got it up on top of the bull, all I could think was this is too, this is way too top heavy. You had this, you know, uh, cylindrical build that really wasn't going to do what it really should have. At least it, it didn't appear to. And so they spun the thing up and it crashed on level four. I know. Now, one of the things that I took away from this that I found really interesting is that Jamie, I can't remember whether it was after it happened or before um, when he was talking to them, but he suspected that too much weight, um, that there was too much weight for the base studs to hold. And that was absolutely the case. Some of the others, their bottom stayed on and the top part of their build came off like at the hip or something like that. But theirs, theirs just completely just crumbled. It just fell apart. Uh, and there is, there is a little detail that you guys are going to have with this nugget as well um, from this from this uh, exit interview with uh, Carrie and Patrick. So I'm going to, I'm going to save that. There's actually a few. Um, let's move on to Liz and Aaron. They did the rootin' tootin' tootie. I love the colors um, that they did with this, especially the capes, how they used it as the fringe pieces for, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a bull rider. I've never been into riding things like that. Just not my wheelhouse. Um, but you know, they come out with those kind of shirts. I like the way that they did the capes down the sides of the, uh, the front of the body along the, the side, um, I guess side front side, whatever. I like the way that was done. It was kind of neat. It, it different feathering kind of idea that was going on. And, um, the build is really cool. I like the way it was done. And then it broke off at level seven actually did better than uh, a lot of the others actually. Let's get into Brendan and Greg. Brendan and Greg had Kelsey the Cactopus Queen. That sounds so weird to say. Because when I was making my notes, I was like, oh, the Cactus Queen. Okay. And then when they came up, it was the Cactopus Queen. I was like, that just, it feels weird to come out of the mouth. It just doesn't seem to fit right, but it fits. Anyway, bright, or I shouldn't say bright green, but a very brightish uh, green color that they went with here. I absolutely love the way that was done. They had arms that wrapped under around uh, the belly of the bull. One of the things that they really did well is they, what they were going for was they were going for like a, a, a suspension dampening system. So kind of what they had mentioned, you know, how it's like the waist of a bull rider, right? Your butt and everything else you want stable, you, you move at the waist and stuff like that. And that's a, well, I guess one way or the other, but they wanted the movement right there, but they did a good job with it. What they did is they took ball joints. They did some of the big ball joints for the each end of uh, each individual segments of like the, um, the octopus arms, the cactopus arms. And then they also use string, um, string pieces that have the studs connected to the end to intertwine them so that they had that even more rigidity, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, one of the things that I found really interesting was the rocker joints that they used. What they actually created, they created them using rubber tires. So you had this kind of suspension, this active suspension that was working. But honestly, I think um, I think the motion of that actually created too much strain on the build. You know, in hindsight, you go back and you look, you, the idea is there. It just needs more refined. I think if you took that idea and maybe you did it more with like a squatty build of, of the jackalope, that probably would have been better. But I think because there was too much motion, maybe maybe if they refined that motion so the suspension wasn't having to take as much of a massive hit on the physics side of things, it probably would have done better. But anyway, they broke off at level six. Not bad. Definitely not in the bottom yet. So, you know, that's, that's a plus. John and Xavier... They did the radar android from space to the Wild West. 
um, they really did well. They, this was an anime build for them. They wanted to do the anime style. I thought the face looked really, really cool as far as an anime style. It was like spot on as you could get with Lego in the amount of time that they had. I thought it was perfect. Anyway, it broke off at level eight, which, hey, it puts you up in the top, not in the top top, but it keeps you alive. That keeps you out of the bottom too, and that's all you want. Dave and Emily were up next. They did Toby the Piggy. Toby had his... uh his little piggy cupcake that he was holding, he or she. What I found interesting is I did like the build, but it reminded me a lot of Unikitty in the face. <laughs> I know it wasn't, but there was a lot of like, that really looks like Unikitty. But as a whole, I, I thought the build was actually pretty cute. But it broke off at level two. And going back and listening to what they had to say for a second time of how they went about their build and stuff like that, they just... There was not enough rigidity there in the way that they went. And Jamie all, uh, kind of, in a way, warned them. I mean, he's not going to you know, blatantly come out and say, your build sucks, fix it. This is not going to work. But you have to pick apart what they say. When they give you a response, you have to pick apart what they say so you have an idea of, okay, he, they, they don't think this is going to work. We need to adjust. So next up, we have Austin and Justin. They did the octopus. What is it with the octopus theme? Well, I guess the legs hanging down, you know. Anyway, they did a perfection octopus. It had the legs, tentacles, whatever you want to call them. They had all of them anatomically correct. It was a nice build. I loved all the arms and the legs, though. I thought that was really neat. It, it really displayed well. It was a really cute build. Um, the color was really nice. I really like that blue color that they used there. Uh, it just turned out really well. Theirs broke off at level eight as well. A lot of level eights, a lot of level sevens here. In that mid, I, I should say upper mid category, because nine, nine and ten is like creme de la creme, right? So there's broke off at level eight. And we have Christine and Michelle. I'm going to butcher this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go. The Chabalita, I couldn't even find an exact definition on what this is, uh, but it's basically the Day of the Dead character, character, skeleton, whatever you want to call it, um, with in Mexican colors. I thought it was neat. Uh, but my God, the vision that I had in my head of Day of the Dead stuff compared to what they built, it, it is something that is going to haunt my dreams probably the rest of my life, at least for tonight. <laughs> it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. All I could keep thinking about is like looking at it, I was like, God, it's so scary. Why Why am I so afraid of this thing? It looked like a something from Sid's room in Toy Story. Like it was, it was just horrible. Just a, just frightening little build. It had to. The hair didn't help. The way that they did the hair, that that de- definitely didn't help. It made it worse. Anyway, they just broke off at level seven. All right, Stephen and Stephen, they did Burton the bow legged bullfrog. Blah blah blah. Uh, that's exactly what my tongue did in my mouth. That was weird. Anyway, they did Burton. I love the face and the colors of this thing. They did a really really good job of the face. These guys are really impressing me. I didn't have a whole lot of hope for them in the beginning. I don't know why. They just didn't seem like the dudes to be able to do it. Maybe if they weren't in their uniforms, it, it might change some things. Maybe just regular street clothes. But my God, the giant belt buckle that they used, I was like, yep, that is that is true to the fullest degree that it could be. I loved it. I thought it was a really neat uh, build, and the belt buckle was fantastic. However, it did break off at level eight, which leaves them in a good spot, right? They're not in bottom two easily. So let's talk about the top two. The top two is where we want to go first. Emily and Liam, mother, son, and Steven and Steven. Obviously, we know if you've already seen it, you already know who got the golden brick, and I'm not surprised. Emily and Liam deserve the golden brick. Absolutely, they did. It was a perfect build in every way, shape, and form. The color, the design, the build the functionality to be able to, what, withstand to level 10. That's everything that you need right there. Steven and Steven were not that far behind. I thought they got close. Their build was really nice as well. I did like it. That I don't know. I think their build is probably my third favorite behind um, Nick and his partner's build just because of the ballerina, like I, like I had mentioned. I was gushing about it before. So let's move on to the bottom two. Carrie and Patrick were chosen. And Dave and Emily. So Carrie and Patrick, I had mentioned last week, and some of you thought I was a little, a little too harsh. But the the competition is so tough that you've got to bring a game on top of 
A++ game. You just have to. So they are in the bottom two. Dave and Emily, Dave and Emily scare me. I think that there is a challenge where they are going to do very well and probably finish in the top three. Maybe even get the top two. But in a general sense, I, I just really don't see them staying around super long. Anything can happen. We don't know. I don't know. They know. They've already done it. They've already lived it. But I just don't foresee them staying around super duper long. And I know you're, some of you are going to say, that's just harsh. It's reality. It's based on what I'm seeing. I think they work okay together. I don't think they work really, really well together. I think there's a lot of parallel building. I don't think there's any you know, group building going on with the two of them. It's a really weird dynamic that I'm seeing. So before we get into next week, what next week has to offer, I went and I did some digging because I'll, I'll follow it up here in a moment in a moment. But I went and I did some digging. I wanted to look at the rating share for Lego Master so far this year. The first episode, they were at 1.4 mil. In the last two episodes, 1.5 mil. Okay. Not horrible, right? Not 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 super bad. It could be way worse. But then you compare this episode against what else they're fighting, what else they're going up against. And it just wasn't it just wasn't very good. In their block, they got they got absolutely slaughtered. CBS, ABC, NBC, all of those shows beat up on them pretty badly. It was it was not very good. And this is a ratings demographic from 18 to 49. Yes, you're going to have your older folks that are watching it and stuff like that. But I mean, that's tough, man. That is really tough to do. That is really, really, really tough to do. So I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of it. If you go back and you look at season two, the third episode... They were at 1.6. The highest numbers that they got for last year were 1.690 million viewers. I'm not saying that it's not possible. I, I just don't, I don't know what they need to do. And I've, and I've had a lot of theories about this. I just don't know that there's an, enough interest there in what the show is anymore. And I've, I've talked to a bunch of other uh, fan media. I've talked to a bunch of other fans in general of the show, of my show, of other shows other other content, and there's just not as much of an interest. I don't know whether it's that there's so much begging for your time, you know, where you're like, you know what, I really don't want to watch this, or I can come back and watch it and do a fast watch. And if I'm not mistaken, anything that you watch after the fact, the ratings get calculated in or something like that. It's so many days, like if you DVR it, it gets counted in. I don't know. But if you watch it after the fact, I think you have to watch it within like, 48 hours before for it to get counted. I don't know. I can't remember it specifically, but it's one of those weird things. Regardless, the viewers aren't there. And I'm not saying this is going to be dropped by Fox, even though their editing is not great. It's definitely not great. I felt like it was a little bit better, not as jumpy on this episode. Not that they have changed anything. This show's already been pre-produced and done already over with. But I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Is this something that is going to end up getting canceled at some point in time? Maybe after the season? I don't think so. I think if anything, they'll give it another run after this. And then we may see it, you know, get canned. I don't I don't know what the investment is from the Lego group side, from the production company, from Fox. I, don't, I have no idea. Time is money. And that time slot is worth a lot of money. So next week, Ethan and Dom have showed up. They are coming into the show. And... It's funny, Will said, you know, we told you there was going to be changes and, you know, things happening. Yeah, that's a lot that has happened. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, holy crap, that's Ethan, Ethan the Artisan, which I interviewed him in Bricks Clean. And I was like, I, I, I need to go back and listen to the show. But I swear, I swear I said something in there in either my my monologue or or you know, in the, in the wrap up at the end that he's going to be on Lego masters one day. I uh, look, I had no idea. I had no idea. No one had let me know any of this. I had no clue. So maybe I'm just a prag prognosticator of prognosticators. If you get that reference anyway. So I thought that was really neat. I was like, oh, I, was, uh, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, and then the last thing that is for next week is it is a bonsai tree. It is a suspended build. There are no base studs that they're going to be connecting to. So that ought to be a lot of fun. 
I'll be curious to see what that looks like. And uh, we'll go from there. So I do have the exit interview coming up tomorrow. Make sure you guys do check that out with Carrie and Patrick. It was a very delightful, delightful interview uh, to put together um, and, and just talk to guys that, you know, you get a different perspective when you're much older. And if I'm not mistaken, Patrick said he was 76, I believe, which is Hey, that's it's hey, good on you. Coming on Lego Masters at that age, I love it. So until we meet again, I'm your mini fit ghost Matt. Let's build on it. <laughs>